Isn't that how Jesus is for us, right? When we follow him. Well, I get to talk to you about being noticeable today. My name's Angela Claiborne. I serve as your connection pastor here at Valley Christian Center. And I'm so honored to do that. Thank you. <laughs> Um, Pastor Rini is going to be beginning his four-part series on the promises next week, since this is a month with five weeks. So I am kicking it off with um, noticeable. So I, um, as a connection pastor, I serve to connect you to discipleship, connect you to life groups, and then um, I get to welcome our guests here. And so that is my privilege to do that. But my purpose statement is to help people find where they belong in the body of Christ. My purpose statement, again, is to help people find where they belong in the body of Christ. I love when I get to say that out loud. It's so exciting the moment that I had discovered what my purpose is. That sense of belonging is really incredibly important to me. That no one is left out. That everybody has something to contribute to the kingdom of God. And so my, um, I really want to help you find that because I really believe that God is so gracious to us between our pasts, um, our jobs, our skills, the things we enjoy, um, our triumphs and more, that he gives us kind of an outline of how we can impact our world with those that we have influence um, into those people's lives. I really feel like I... Um, my past has propelled me into the life that I'm living now and why every person is so valuable to the kingdom of God. I feel my job is to encourage, build up, catapult people into their calling, into your calling, that your contribution matters. And I really feel like the ripple effect of our lives are far reaching and they can really impact people greatly. And so I hope that even if I've been only in your life for a small time, that, um, that I have had a positive impact. I really want to leave people better than I found them. Would you agree that that's something that you want to do too? Yeah, I agree. You see, no matter our age, we can find our purpose um, and begin living that out. From the Old Testament, from David as a teenage boy to Moses, an old man, from Esther, a young girl, to Sarah, an old woman, God has a specific purpose that only you can fulfill if you're willing. I never in a million years would have thought of myself as a discipleship pastor. Never. Um, I am not educated in the traditional sense. I just have a high school education, but I um, am a lifelong learner, and the things that I have chosen to be a part of to continue to pour into me have been really um, beautiful, such as the Central Valley School of Ministry, which starts this month, if you want to get in on that. It's a really incredible um, course. I have also read books and read the word daily, and um, I have mentors, and I have life groups, so lots of people speaking in to my life. Uh, but I was, not was, I am, <laughs> I am a woman who was raised in a blended family, I am, I am a woman who was raised in a blended family, um, I'm not dead, um, so anyway, um, we really though lived as if we had like a facade mask of Christian you know and I don't know about you but I always chased after God to be good enough you know like that video I never could measure up because I wasn't actually letting God be a part of my life I'm flawed and through those flaws is where Jesus shines where once I was a liar and a fake and a fraud through Jesus I am transparent, I am honest, and I speak truth. With Jesus, I have purpose. With Jesus, I became noticeable. You see, the people that he calls, he equips. We must answer that call in order to be noticeable. So starting from the beginning, what does it mean to be a Christian? A Christian, in your outline, is a person who receives and believes in Jesus Christ as their personal savior. So a Christian is a person who receives and believes in Jesus Christ as their personal savior. In Romans 10, 9, it reads, if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I love how clear that is. You will be saved. But after you become a Christian, 
you might start hearing the word disciple and discipleship. You might be wondering, like, what is that? Who is that? What does that even mean, disciple? Well, disciple is a personal follower of Jesus during his life. Uh, a disciple is one who accepts and assists in spreading the doctrines of another, such as Christianity. And a disciple is a follower or student of a teacher, leader, or philosopher. When I first hear the word disciple, though, I think of the 12. I don't know about you, but that's who I think of, the, first, the 12. So I think of Peter and Andrew, Peter's brother. I think of James and John, James's brother. I think of Philip, Nathaniel, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon, Matthew, and Judas Iscariot. Now, we may all know what happened to Judas, but what happened to the rest of these guys? Peter is viewed as the first pope by the Roman Catholics. He was martyred in Rome under Nero, and he chose to be crucified on a cross upside down because he didn't want his death to equal that of Jesus's. All the other guys die horrible deaths, like beheading, skinned alive, stoning, stabbing, horrible. It's really intense. Except for John. John was the only disciple that died of old age. For me, it's so much easier to picture the, um, the disciples sitting around Jesus, you know, doing the miracles, watching him do his work, singing kumbaya, my lord, kumbaya, right? But we don't think of the end of their life. We don't think about how they died, at least I don't, but we're still talking about them today. Their lives were worth taking notice of. They chose to follow the one and only son of God. And even Judas, understanding what he had done wrong at the end, we can learn from his life too. As I was studying this, I, um, I thought about Judas. And so I reread his story. So I'm going to share that with you today. It's in Matthew 27. It says, early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people came to the decision to put Jesus to death. They bound him, led him away, and handcuffed, um, handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, who has betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he had seized with remorse and returned the 30 silver coins to the chief priest and the elders. I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us? That's your responsibility. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went away and hanged himself. Why I brought this up is, as I was studying for this, you know, it's easy to just put, cast somebody aside. Like, I don't really want to talk about Judas. But there might be people in this room that are dealing with what we were talking about in worship, those struggles, what you came in with, those dark moments. That was a dark moment for Judas. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. But he tried. He tried to repent. But he couldn't wait the three days for Jesus to resurrect and to forgive him personally. He couldn't hold out for those three days. What's so important about us being a part of a fellowship of the church body is that we get to be known and get to be noticed. We get to notice people that you're missing, that you're here, that you're in group. It's important to be noticed, right? So we're going to unpack that today. Let me pray. Lord Jesus, to those who know you already, I ask for your Holy Spirit to remind them of their calling. Encourage them that though there may be tough seasons of life, you do not forsake us. For those that are investigating who you are, I pray that something that's said today be deposited in their spirits where they want to learn more about you and who you are. As you helped me write this message, I choose to step out of myself and into your anointing. And may your words come forth today. Amen. So I want to start where we're headed. The disciple is a person who is noticeable by living their life as a follower of Jesus. A disciple is a person who is noticeable by living their life as a follower of Jesus. So what does it mean to be noticeable? Noticeable means attracting notice or attention. It's worthy or deserving of notice or attention. It's noteworthy. So again, a Christian can receive and believe Jesus as their personal savior. That's a Christian. But how do I recognize a disciple of Christ? 
How do I recognize those that are following Christ? Well, here are a few ways. They daily read the Bible. They pray. They get freedom from strongholds. They serve the community. They live a life of sacrificial generosity. They share their story with others. And they celebrate. So if you're looking at this list, I think you guys would agree. No, go back. Go back. <laughs> looking at this list, I think you guys would agree that this is, these are definitely things that we recognize as people that follow Christ. To be saved, to be called a Christian, all you have to do is say yes. But to be a disciple, a follower of Christ, a student of Christ, to serve Jesus, to be noticeable, that's where this other stuff comes in. But not as a checklist. This is a way to see that you are moving more and more toward God. I had ordered these online, and it's a cedar tree seed. And I was really surprised it wasn't even as big as an acorn. These are super tiny, right? And this is a cedar tree. Can you put that picture up, the cedar? That's, that's huge, right? But it all starts with this tiny speck of a seed. But unless this seed gets planted, it's not very noticeable. You could drop it. I wouldn't know where to pick it up. I'm 42. I don't have that good of eyesight anymore. But if this seed gets care, if it gets put in the right soil, if it gets watered, it becomes incredibly noticeable, right? But just a seed, we could walk right over it, we could cast it aside, not even knowing its potential. But when it becomes the tree, that's where I want you guys to write in your outline. Don't be a seed that never gets planted. Don't be a seed that never gets planted. I don't want it said of me that I was just a Christian. I was like that as a teenager. I was a teenager that, you know, wore the cross but had a filthy mouth. Dated all the boys because I really like boys. And... Uh, I said I was a Christian, I went to church, you know. But that was all that was noticeable about me. When I had that moment of transformation with the Lord, I was 13. I was 13. And that's where I got planted. I might have gone to church my whole life. I didn't start walking with the Lord until I got real with the Lord. You know, don't be a seed that never gets planted. I want it said of me that I'm not just a Christian, but I'm somebody who shares their story with others, that I encourage you, that I build you up, that I catapult you into the, to the calling that God has on your life. Can you see and hear the difference? Oh, yeah, she's a Christian. Versus, no, she lives her life to help people belong to the kingdom of God. Share Jesus' story with me. I go from a noun to a verb just that quick. I want it described of me to, that I want to be a noticeable disciple of Christ. Being just a Christian to me isn't good enough. Just having a cedar tree seed isn't good enough. But let's dig in and grow deep roots in the word of God, just like Jesus says in John 13, 34, and 35. A new command I give you, love, one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And as I was studying that, I have this whole little green sheet here of chicken scratch because I had prepared this message way over a month ago because I have it, had to have it translated in Spanish because I'm speaking in that service too. I'm not speaking Spanish, but I have a translator. Um, and so I had to have it done really early. So as, I, as the weeks were coming up, I was like, God, is there more that you want to say, though? 
And so my little green sheet is where I really felt like the Holy Spirit was giving me little things. And so in first service, I really felt a call to, to speak on something. But in this service, I really feel like God wants you to consider your life. If you're standing in a room, because I believe, I mean, I know that there's people here that are seeking the Lord, but who I'm speaking to right now are Christ followers. As a Christ follower, if you were in a, a lineup, would people know that you're a Christ follower? by how you spend your time, how you spend your money, the relationships you have. Would you have the subscriptions? Would you have the dark stuff that nobody wants to talk about? But we all struggle. This isn't about perfection. We all struggle. That's why we have a life group. We have life groups here that help you with those struggles. It's time to get real with the Lord so that we can be noticeable for the right things. Amen. Right? I want to be noticeable because Jesus lived his life on purpose. He lived with purpose and on purpose. He knew his purpose and he lived it out. What Jesus did on earth for his 33 years was remarkable. He lived a life worth taking notice of. He was 30 years old before being baptized with water by John the Baptist where when he was coming up out of the water, it reads in Matthew 3, 16 and 17, when Jesus was baptized, he immediately came up out of the water. Heaven was opened to him and he saw the spirit of God down like a dove and resting on him. A voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I dearly love. I find happiness in him. Right after this moment, Jesus was tempted for 40 days. I can't imagine being tempted for 40 days. It's been kind of a rough week, I have to tell you. When you're given the word, we appreciate all the prayers as pastors. <laughs> and I know you've been praying for me because I'm able to walk and stand, which is remarkable because I've had issues with my knees. God is here, and he loves us as his, as his people. And I am just so grateful that we can call on the Lord at any, any notice, you know, but the reason that he was able to overcome that temptation is because he knew the scripture. He combated the lies of the enemy with the truth of the word. And we gave you guys a my true identity in your, in your bulletins. Do you want to pull that out? This is who God says you are and where it's found in the word. It's who God says you are and where to find it in scripture. Because the enemy knows the scriptures too, but he misquotes them and speaks them out of context. If we aren't rooted in the word, it will be very easy to become the enemy's victim. Also, in Jesus' three years, he began to preach, and he found his disciples. These guys knew the scriptures too, and they were waiting for the Messiah. Bible scholars estimate that there was approximately 322 direct prophecies about describing the character and nature of the coming Messiah. Some of them giving specific details about his birth, his life, and his death. And the fulfillment of these prophecies was how the apostles knew that Jesus was who he said he was. It's how they recognized him. Jesus says in Matthew 4, 19 and 20, come follow me. Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. And at once they left their nets and followed him. You don't leave behind your, your parents or your job unless the Son of God is calling you. And they left at once, immediately. No wrapping things up, no getting coverage for their fisher, fisherman duties. Um, they left at once. And I looked up what at once means in the original Greek, and guess what at once means? Yes, at once. It means at once. At once means at once. It took me a long time to figure that out because I hadn't done that before and I was like, oh, at once means at once. That's awesome. Um, I know that some parents would love for their children to do something at once, right? Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they left at once to follow Jesus. So again, Jesus was baptized at age 30, where his ministry began and then crucified at age 33. In those three years, he performed 40 miracles. So 40 miracles in three years is about one every 27 days. 
So one miracle every month, three years. My question is, is why were there not more believers? Why did some choose not to believe? And why do we struggle with our belief? These weren't all private miracles either. Some of them, there's no way you can even hail them as a coincidence. He healed a leper, someone who had been an outcast with, um, with no people around them. There's this leper colony. He healed them. This is a disease that can leave you with no fingers, no toes, no eyes, no nose. This person lived with no purpose and no one. And now this leper has no disease. He's healed. He could enter society again. People had to have noticed. Jesus healed a paralyzed man, and now that person was walking and mobile. People had to have noticed. Jesus raised a widow's son from the dead. You can read about it in Luke 7, 11 through 17. This man was being carried out in his coffin. So just imagine, like, here's pallbearers going down the, this aisle, and they're in the coffin, and Jesus says, young man, I say to you, get up. We would think that's crazy. But our Jesus is a miracle worker, right? And he got up and began to talk. People had to have noticed. The woman who was healed of the blood issue, she was so brave to come into the crowd and believed if she just touched the hem of Christ's garment, she would be healed. In Luke 8, 46, Jesus said, someone touched me. I know power has gone from me. When you're in a big crowd, everybody's touching you. How do you know? Jesus knew. Jesus knew. And it reads in 46 and 40, or 47 and 48 of that, of Luke 8. Then the woman, seeing that she could go unnoticed, came trembling at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had found instantly, she had been instantly healed. And Jesus says to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. People had to have noticed. He fed over 5,000 men, plus women and children, people had to have noticed. Blind were healed and people were raised from the dead. People had to have noticed. And there are so many more examples of miracles. But the main point is, can you say it with me? People had to have noticed. Say it again. Say it louder. People had to have noticed. Yes, people had to have noticed. And they wrote it down. They wrote it down for us. I love that. People had to have noticed. There are so many accounts of Christ's ministry. So when Jesus died and was resurrected, and he came back to his disciples and said what we know today as the Great Commission, and we are all ministers of the gospel if we believe in Jesus. So let's read this scripture together. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Ready, begin. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So again, 10 of the early disciples were martyred for their faith. So going back to the questions I asked early on, why would I want to be a disciple of Christ? Why would I want to follow Christ? What is Jesus calling me to? And why do I feel a longing to follow him? And the answer is Jesus led a life that was worth taking notice of. And what we noticed was life transformation. People's lives were transformed because of Jesus. From baptism of going under the water as your old self, dying to the life that you lived before Christ and coming out of the water a new creation, alive in Christ, ready to help people transform their lives, we should be shouting with all we believe, I believe. We should be shouting with all we have, I believe. I jumped the gun. I believe, right? I believe. People are healed by the name of Jesus. People are set free by the name of Jesus. People are restored by the name of Jesus. People are forgiven by the name of Jesus. People are accepted by the name of Jesus. And people are loved by the name of Jesus. And you may be thinking, well, I want my life to be worth taking notice of too. I want to be noticeable, and you can. Again, to be a Christian, you just say yes to Jesus. It really is that simple. 
But we Christ followers know just like life, it can be tough sometimes. So we want to come alongside of you as your church body to help you with your walk with Christ. Because coming to church, we're not here to entertain you. We are here to equip you and to encourage you for the life you live day to day. That is our job here, and we want to do it well. As far as walking with Christ as a disciple, you can change the front of your outline to read, I will. I will daily read the Bible. There are tons of things out there, version Bible, Bible apps. We have a free Bible we'd love to put in your hands today. A very easy reading plan. What about I will pray? It's just talking to God like you would a friend and learning how to hear his voice, and we can help you with that too. What about I will get freedom from strongholds in my life? This is repenting for your sins. It's turning from the life you were living now and turning and moving back toward God. This isn't a one and done thing either. I loved that Pastor Jenna had that part of her communion. Sometimes things just, we're just still like going through stuff. It's like, oh, ooh, that's a little ugly. I need to get rid of that. That's where Judas, he struggled with money. He had no business being the treasurer, right? Come on. We have an issue. Stay away from the stuff we got issues with. Get healing from the Lord. We want to help. We're your church body, your church family. We're all sinners and all need forgiveness. How about I will serve the community? Sir, be the hands and feet of Jesus. Link with us. Link with the Valley Dream Center. Link with your community. How about I will live a life of sacrificial generosity? That's your tithes, your offering. That's giving to missions, both local and international. But it's also giving of food and shelter and clothes to, to meet people's needs. How about I will share my story with others? You have an important story because there's only one of you. We need to hear your story. People need to hear your story. They need to hear how God has transformed your life, that your story is unique and valuable. So stay with me. I am worth noticing. Say it again. I am worth noticing. Say it one more time. I am worth noticing. Amen. You are worth noticing. And that leads us to, I will celebrate. We need to celebrate things better, right? Just like last Sunday was so incredible. We had 53 people baptized. Can we have that picture back up? Woo! Yeah. These are stories of both English and Spanish. This is just a teeny snapshot. But these are some of you. These are stories that we need to hear, and we need to celebrate you, and you need to celebrate others. This is incredible, and we really are working on the whole video so you can see it, because it was powerful last week. Absolutely. But we are in this together, and we want to root each other on. But don't let being a disciple overwhelm you as a whole. Start choosing one area to focus on. You know, maybe you haven't been as disciplined with reading your Bible. Somebody came up to me first service and said that because she has a learning disability. And I said, you know what's so cool about some of the Bible apps now? You just push the, there's this um, hearing thing, and then you can hear the Bible. That's awesome. I said, just play it. Play it for yourself. There's ways to do this, you guys. But I do believe no matter how long we've been a Christ follower, some, something in here we can do better at. And it's not as a checklist, like I said. This is just to grow closer to the Lord and help people grow closer to the Lord. We as a pastoral staff have been challenged by the Great Commission. We had to really ask ourselves, are we doing well in this area? And no, we didn't think that we were doing very well in this area, that we could do better. So currently, how VCC is making disciples is through our life development process. So this morning, we had Got Jesus during our 9 o'clock service. Um, next week, will be Got Baptism. If you do want to be baptized, we'd love to baptize you next week. Um, it's not going to be outdoors. It'll be right here. Uh, but we would love for you to go to our class, Got Baptism. Then there's Got Talent, which teaches you about your, um, the gifts and talents God's already given you and how to use those in the body of Christ. Then there's Got Mission, how to share your story. And then Got Spirit, just a, a class about the Holy Spirit. 
So if you want to get in on these, we would love for you to. This will be the last month that we're offering this because we were really hunting for something new. Like this is good, but we've had it around for a while. So we were hunting for something new to grow even deeper in the Lord. And we believe that we have found it. We're rolling out a new discipleship life group called Rooted. Rooted connects us to God, connects us to community through the church, and connects us to purpose. It's going to help us grow deeper in our relationships with Christ and with others. We have some key leaders in our Spanish and English services starting this next week, but we're going to roll it out to the church in February, which we're really excited to do that. And we're going to offer it three times a year during the life group cycles. We're going to establish firm roots in the word of God through personal study and then come together to discuss what we've learned in a space that is safe and where we are known. So here's a video from some in our pastoral staff um, of their life transformation so far that has happened through Rooted. After serving Jesus for almost 40 years, you wonder if you know it all. And then there are days you wake up and you realize you know very little. And one thing that Rooted has brought back to the equation is a refreshing in my intimacy with my relationship with Jesus Christ. I just loved the prayer experience. It's an incredible time to come together, not only to be guided through um, a way to pray in an extended period of time, but you get to hear from the Lord. Isaiah 41, 13, I am the Lord your God. I take hold of your right hand. I say to you, do not be afraid. I will help you. And what I have found is that God has helped me throughout my entire life, but specifically on this journey of Rooted, I'm just so encouraged that I have found healing. What Rooted has done is reminded me that um, in our daily life, we still need Jesus. In our daily life, uh, we still need exposure to His Word and what He has to say for us. Over the 10 weeks of Rooted, I have had an opportunity to gain healing, refocus on what matters most in life, and to look forward to what God has for me in the future. So Rooted for me has been an amazing journey of getting to have um, time in my week to relate vulnerably and authentically with people that I trust. So if you are busy, this is something that is worth the investment, is worth the time, because it will absolutely give you strength for all of the to-dos and all of the things that um, we carry in life. We need time with those who are walking this road with Jesus together. One of the things I love about Rooted is that it's designed to be led by the Holy Spirit. We pray together, we read the Word, we encourage each other, we give words of affirmation, we have a time where there's prophetic prayer over us, and it brings together such a great amount of unity. I would love to get to know my BCC family as we go through Rooted. I really enjoyed this Rooted experience, particularly the community, the sense of community, gathering together as a group, um, having an opp opportunity to dig into what God was speaking to us throughout the week, and then meeting and unpacking that together. It is overwhelming to think, how do you lead a congregation to intimacy? And after over a year of researching different programs, we found that Rooted is the most powerful way to have an entire congregation have a singularity of direction in their walk with Jesus. So please make every effort to go through Rooted because it will change your life. Yeah, that's exciting, right? Yeah. I'm excited about it. Well, there's no hiding when you become noticeable. And that's the thing, is there's no hiding when you become noticeable. When God moves in our lives, we want to tell other people. And God moved in our lives, and we want to tell you. And we want to tell you. We want to make sure um, that God is the one speaking to us. And through this, it was so awesome how much God spoke to me and confirmed things, clarified my purpose. It really has been incredible. He made sure I knew to not withdraw as I'm still recovering, like I had shared with some knee issues, to not isolate. 
but that no matter my physical condition, that I could still shine for him. You know, I choose to be noticeable. Miracles still happen today, right? I've gotten so much prayer over this week, and I'm shocked I can stand. I, can, I could barely stand still for like three minutes, and I have to sit down. And so um, this is God's grace on me today, and I know it. <laughs> it's good. We're going to be better at taking notice of things and being noticeable. In America, we may not have the same struggles of being stoned or beheaded because of our faith, um, but we do have temptation. We do have apathy and living without purpose. And you might be asking, how do I overcome temptation? Know God's word and combat the lies of the enemy with God's truth. Just like Jesus did. Surround yourself with Christ followers. Okay, well, how do I overcome apathy, which is a lack of interest, a lack of concern, a lack of enthusiasm? How do I overcome that? Find out how God made you and take an interest in the things that interest the Lord and that you can be a part of. How do I live with purpose? Use your story to share with others. Use your gifts and your talents. Make an impact on those that you have influence with, whether that's your parents, your kids, your coworkers, your friends. So again, through Jesus, you are healed. You are set free. You are restored. You are forgiven. You are accepted. You are loved. You are noticeable. Could the prayer teams and worship team go ahead and come forward? I want to make this a more personal, though. Again, on your outline, you could change you to I. And I know this is going to be on the slides, but I want you to repeat after me. Through Jesus, I am healed. Through Jesus, I am set free. Through Jesus, I am restored. Through Jesus, I am forgiven. Through Jesus, I am accepted. Through Jesus, I am loved. Through Jesus, I am noticeable. God is calling us to follow Jesus. And today might be the day that we celebrate you. Someone in here might be ready to say yes to Jesus and all that he's calling you to do and be. And all you have to say is, yes, I believe. So going back to my... Beginning of the talk in Romans 10, 9, it says, If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Let's bow our heads. Who in here is ready to say yes? Just raise your hands if you are ready to say yes today. This could be your I believe moment. I'm going to wait for the Holy Spirit to do his work. This could be your I believe moment. Who in here is ready to say yes to Jesus and all he is calling you to do and be? All you have to do is slip up your hand. Let me know who I'm praying with. message was directed at believers. We had a couple people say yes to Jesus in first service. And if you don't feel comfortable coming, uh, raising your hand, you're welcome to come forward and tell one of our prayer team members that you said yes to Jesus today. We have a yes box that we like to put in your hands. But I'm just going to seal this message. Lord God, right now, I thank you for what you spoke to us today as believers of Help us to be more noticeable in our day-to-day -day lives. Reveal to us where you are challenging us to, to do more. Or maybe we hadn't looked at all those areas of how we can be a disciple. Maybe that something was revealed today. Help us step into that today. We thank you for all that you have called us to do and be. And we thank you for saving us. Amen. I hope you all enjoy the True Identity bookmark. I want you to speak those words over yourself. If you're struggling, come to the prayer team. They'll help you. They'll help pray over you before you head to the courtyard. We all need each other. So take advantage of what we offer here at Valley with life groups um, attending regularly. 
pray about being a part of Rooted when it is available in February, May, and September of next year. I do believe we are better together, so let's be noticeable to our world. Thank you. Thank you.